Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs with a follow-up video to the last one about the ingenious reciprocal counter. Now, if you have ever seen one of those quite expensive HP, Keyside, Agilent, or however they are called in the future, counters, which have resolutions up to 12 digits as far as I remember, uh, you might wonder, as I have done, how is it possible to reach such a high uh, resolution? Um, can this be really be accomplished with a reciprocal counter? So let's take a closer look at the resolution distinguished for frequency and period measurement of the three basic counter types. And let's start with a classical counter. The classical counter simply counts pulses during the gate time. And so the resolution you get is when you measure a frequency, you have your gate time and x number of pulses and this x is simply your frequency. So the resolution is 1 in the frequency times your gate time. And the frequency measured in hertz and the gate time measured in seconds. Now, what is typical? <clears throat> As you can see, the resolution is not constant, but it depends, of course, on your frequency when you have a fixed gate time. Now, let's take a typical example of, let's say, we measure 1 kilohertz with a gate time of one second, and we only have a resolution of one in 1000, or just three significant digits. So that's the disadvantage of the classical counter. Let's take a look if it gets any better if we, instead of measuring the frequency, if we measure the period with a classical counter. Now, how is this done? You simply swap the two inputs of the counter, you have the, normally the frequency input and the gate time input, and now you put your reference clock where you usually have your frequency input, and your frequency becomes the gate timer. And so there we have a resolution of 1 in your reference clock frequency, times, now it's now because the gate time is now the period of our frequency, times 1 over the frequency. And see if this gets any better. Our reference clock is for usually 10 megahertz. And if we stay at our 1 kilohertz example, we have, of course, a period time of one milliseconds, which is one over the frequency. And this gives us one in 10,000. And so although this is one digit, one significant digit better, if we would go to 3.33 kilohertz, we would get exactly the same result on both sides. So the maximum resolution you can get with a classical counter at the worst case is 1 in 3333 if you have either, if you use 10 megahertz reference clock in period measurement or one second of gate time in frequency measurement. And the only thing to improve this, and this is quite bad, here 1 in 1,000, 1 in 10,000, or the worst case, 1 in 3,333, uh, that's just three and a half digits, worst case. And that's the reason why a classical counter is, in today's world, not the counter of choice. So what can you do about it? Of course, you can extend your gate time to... 10 seconds, 100 seconds, but how long do you want to wait until you get finally six or seven digits of resolution? And what could you do here? Well, the only variable you have is your reference clock and you can't get them much higher 
than 10 megahertz. So there is not much to do how to improve the resolution of a classical counter. So that's why at some time the idea of the reciprocal counter came out. And I've explained how it works in the last video. And let's compare now the resolution for frequency or period measurement to the classical counter. Now the resolution is 1 in your reference frequency, your reference oscillator, times your gate time. And so the measurement frequency doesn't appear anymore, so you have an independent resolution only determined by your usually fixed reference frequency and your gate time, which can be 1 second, 0.1 second, or if you are satisfied with less significant digits, you can also shorten this to 1 millisecond. Of course, the gate time is a minimum always of the period time of your signal, because you have to measure at least one period. So let's take a typical example. Here above we had one second of gate time and we had 10 megahertz reference clock. So let's take these typical values, 10 megahertz internal reference frequency times one second of gate time and this gives you one in 10 millions or 10 to the seventh power and this is seven significant digits for whatever frequency you measure. And you can see what a significant improvement this is from three to four significant digits in, in a worst case at, at frequencies somewhere in the middle of the spectrum up to seven significant digits no matter if you measure 100 megahertz or you measure one hertz. So, and because the reciprocal counter basically is a period measurement counter, the resolution for period measurement is identical. So, we, we are, have reached at seven significant digits. So, what can we do to increase our resolution from typically six to seven significant digits to higher values. We have again two variables. We could extend our gate time, but that's not very practical, just for the same reason as in the classical counter. We don't want to wait for an hour um, until our measurement result appears. So what perhaps the, the limit in practical application would be 10 seconds. So what remains is the reference frequency. Could we increase this? Well, um, usually, no matter if you have a quartz reference or a rubidium reference oscillator, uh, it's most always 10 megahertz. And what can you do about that? Well, you could, of course, take a PLL and multiply this frequency. And let's say you go to 500 megahertz by multiplying it with a factor of 50. Uh, then we would get a 50 times better result, but then you also would need very fast dividers and counters uh, to deal with 500 megahertz, but they are available. So that would be uh, one reason to get somewhere in the region of nine digits. But how did they reach 12 digits? That was a thing that puzzled me a lot until I finally found a classical application note from HP where everything is explained. And uh, so this is a very technical document. It's the AN200, application note 200. I will give you a link in the video description uh, where you can download but it's really worth the reading because there are so many aspects when it comes to high accuracy readings. We, we haven't spoken about the accuracy. We only have spoken about the resolution of your display. So how many seven segment displays you need to display your result. 
And of course we always have this, what we should have to add, this plus minus one count, which is always the case with, sometimes it's even bigger, we will just take a look that it can be even, uh, your result can be two counts of, but the resolution of your display, that is simply determined by what we have written here. So now let's take a look at some diagrams out of this classical HP application note. So here we have, so here we have a diagram explaining the classical plus minus one count error. Uh, you can see the gate time is fixed, but the gate doesn't know when your pulses are coming. And you can see in the first example, during the gate time only one pulse is counted and in the second example two counts are inside the gate time so two counts are counted. There are extreme examples when this the ambiguity can not only be plus minus one but it could become slightly larger than plus minus one. It could all in all be two counts of so what you get is that your least significant digit won't be stable if you don't take any countermeasures. You will usually have a flickering of the last or least significant uh, digit of plus minus one count. But there is a remedy for this and this is what is called an additional arming flip-flop. I won't explain it here. Just read the very good explanation in the application note. So if you have synchronized uh, gating by the means of an extra arming flop, then we get a stable display. So we get away with the jitter in the least significant digit, but we don't increase the resolution. So only getting a stable display has no merit concerning increasing resolution. But now there comes an interesting fact. What would be if we leave out this extra arming flip-flop, but instead we try to measure here not only what the reciprocal counter does, not only measure the number of counts inside your gate time, but if we additionally try to measure here, this period here, from the opening of the gate until the first pulse arrives, and then finally from the closing of the gate here, this second period, until the next pulse arrives. If we could somehow measure this, then we would have exactly what is what the counter misses. The counter can only count single pulses, but not what is between the gate opening and the gate closing, what is happening between. So if we could measure these two times between opening of the gate and the first pulse, and closing of the gate and the next pulse, then we could calculate extra digits of resolution. And how could this be done? We could, for example, charge a capacitor only during these times. So we're charging our capacitor with a constant current starting here, ending here, then it makes a break and again it starts to ramp up with a constant current from here to here. And then when this is finished, when we finish it here with the last pulse, then we simply measure the voltage on our capacitor with an analog to digital converter and the accumulated charge or the voltage that is generated in, in, these, in the sum of these two times, that would give us a measure of the two times T1 plus T2. Another way would be again to multiply with a PLL our reference clock by here it's a factor of thousand and simply count these but therefore you would again need ultra fast counters or dividers. So there are basically two ways that I could 
imagine one is with a capacitor charged with a constant current. Of course, you need, ul you need ultra fast switches, etc. So this is really kind of black magic. But these are two ways how to do it. Charging a capacitor during T1 and T2 or multiplying your reference frequency by a factor of 100 or 1000 and simply count the pulses here during T1 and T2. And so if we go back, this is called the interpolating reciprocal counter. And that's how when you already have reached at seven significant digits, you can then go up to 12 digits because now the resolution is one in your reference frequency be becomes a little bit awkward now <laughs> times your gate time and then comes an additional factor of n and n is determined by either your ADC resolution if you take a capacitor charging up or your PLL factor by which you multiply your reference frequency and count the extra pulses. So I, I know this is a bit, not only a bit, this was quite technical, but it sh should only whet your appetite. Just take the time and read this HP application note. You probably will, as I did, have to read it three times because it's very, very technical. But I've consulted it several times in, in the last years and it really everything you need to know about high resolution counters is explained there in very great detail. So this video was, was not one for the faint of heart. So if you nevertheless enjoyed it, then please give it as always a big thumbs up. See you next time and you can support me on Patreon if you really made it up to the end of this video. So until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanker Labs.